Hi, I'm Kat. And I'm Reed. And we're from Robin Ryle Fine Art. And today's Art Bite is about art appraisals. So the first thing that uh, we need to say off the bat is that we are art dealers and that we're not art appraisers or authenticators. There is a difference between all three. There are three different sectors of the art market and there are very different jobs that are entailed with all three of them. One of the things you have to understand about art is that art is extremely specialized. Just like medicine, you wouldn't necessarily ask your podiatrist in order to do your neurosurgery. Uh, art is the same way. Uh, so as art dealers, we generally turn to appraisers who find a particular value for an artwork. They take all of the research and amalgamate it into one particular number or set of numbers that give you a range of what an artwork can particularly cost. Uh, an authenticator is, is the person who does the forensic research and all of the, the literature behind whether an artwork is actually authentic. Uh, a dealer, like ourselves, sells the artwork. Uh, so we take all of these different things and we move them to uh, a willing buyer uh, from a willing seller. Exactly. So something that's really important to note about appraising a work of art is that this is something that takes an absolute ton of time to do. Yes. So if you happen to have an art appraiser come over for dinner at your house and you have an artwork on the wall, you may not want to say to them, hey, how much is this artwork valued at? Because what they actually do is so entailed and that's kind of what we want to talk to you about today. There's so much beyond looking at a particular artwork that goes into the value. I can look at a piece of artwork on a wall and somebody can ask me what it's worth or whether or not it's authentic and I can say with absolute confidence that I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, even if I'm an expert on that particular artist, there are so many different factors that go into whether or not a particular piece is authentic that I simply can't look at it without taking a vast amount of time and tell you whether or not it's authentic or whether or not it's uh, valuable. Art appraisals take a very, very long time to do because they entail a lot of information. For one work of art, you may get a binder that's 100 pages long. And some of the documents that are included in an art appraisal are going to be a biography of the artist, um, the exhibition history of the artist is another thing that might be mm -hmm. included. Then probably the most important part of the appraisal is going to be the comparables. And that's where the art appraiser is going to show works that have sold in auction, which are the public market. So they're gonna have several examples of similar works to the piece of art that you have a similar year, a similar medium. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, they're going to call people like us and they're going to find out what we're selling our artwork that's similar to that work on the secondary market. So, so they get a broad variation of pricing and they'll get a broad comparable base so that they can come up with what they think a particular artwork is worth. And it will generally range from a high to low range based on both the auction and the private market. One of the other things that's included in appraisals is a provenance. Provenance is essentially the history of an artwork. It tells you who's owned it, when it's been exhibited, what books it perhaps has been featured in. The provenance is something which is absolutely essential to any artwork which is being bought or sold. Uh, that lets us as dealers know that it has a clear history and it has a clear title. People get appraisals for a number of different reasons. One reason is that they might want to sell a piece of art that they have. So for resale, they want to do it. They need to get a valuation of it so they know how much they should be charging for this piece of art. Another reason why people get appraisals is because they have the art insured and the insurance company is going to require an up-to-date appraisal or valuation on the artwork. Sometimes people inherit artwork. Um, unfortunately, death in a family tends to be one of the reasons why people get artwork and they want to know the valuation of it. Um, another reason why people get art appraisals is for charitable donations and for tax purposes. They need to know, well, the IRS frankly needs to know yeah. how much the work is valued at. Does condition affect appraisals? Absolutely. If it's in really great condition, then it might have a higher value. If it's in horrible condition, it might have a lower value. Oftentimes appraisers are going to want to physically see the artwork that they're going to be appraising. So they're going to have the artwork in front of them. But in addition to actually looking at the work, they're also going to want the documentation that comes with the work. So if you buy a masterwork from the 20th century, you can expect to have certain documents that are coming along with it. One piece of 
paperwork that's going to come with a masterwork from the 20th century, for example, is going to be a certificate of authenticity, which is basically saying that the work is authentic and it's by the artist that you think that it's from. Another piece of paperwork that an appraiser is going to probably want to see is going to be the provenance of the work. One of the other pieces of paperwork that an appraiser might actually want is from the Art Loss Registry. Any works which are prior to World War II and even some of the works which are past uh, or post-war works will, will need to have a, a certification from Art Loss Registry that says that it's not a stolen work. Any peripheral documentation that an artwork has, be it a purchase order, be it a, a scrap of newsprint that uh, the artist had written on during a, a drunken night over pizza, all of those things play into the provenance and the value of particular artwork belonging to a particular person and having that history which the provenance is, is suggesting. So all of those factors go into what an appraiser is giving you as part of the value of your artwork. This is one of the reasons why it takes so long and so much research to, that goes into each and every one of these appraisals. A lot of times art appraisers are going to take that paperwork and they're going to follow up on it. Yes. So they might get the provenantial chain of how many times a work has been exhibited or who owned it, but they're going to call their contacts mm -hmm. and they're going to make sure that the work is authentic and that if it was exhibited in 1957 in this particular gallery, they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that that's the case. Yeah. So there's a ton of work that's involved in this. There can be different appraisal values on the same piece of artwork. There can be different values that are given to it, but how does that make any sense? Well, it kind of depends on what the reason for the appraisal is. For example, there's retail replacement value. There's also the IRS value. And if someone wants to liquidate the artwork, that's also another valuation that can be given. So it's not exactly written in stone. This is an exact science. Yes. There is a range that is usually given and it depends on what the reason is for the appraisal. We hope you enjoyed this art bite about art appraisals.